Hello YouTube, Nick here, and today I'm going to be going over the Avermedia um, HD DVR uh, capture card that you install on your computer and can use to capture um, HD gameplay or other things. Um, so this is the box that it comes in. Um, I've already opened this obviously since I use it, but I put everything back in, or most of the stuff back in, and I'm going to be opening it and showing you the contents showing you how to install it, set it up, and use it to capture high definition gameplay. Um, this costs um, anywhere between sixty and a hundred dollars which is a f pretty fair price compared to the Hopog HD PVR which is like two hundred dollars um, and the Blackmagic Intensity Pro which is also around two hundred dollars so this is a pretty fair deal if you ask me um, you can buy it in Canada from Canada Computers in the States. You can get it, I think, from Amazon and some other sites. But um, I'll leave some links in the description if you want to purchase one of these for yourself. Um, if you look at the box here, it says it comes with the uh, capture card model number C027, um, the installation CD, a 10 in 1 dongle cable thing, um, a quick install installation guide which pretty much says put it in your computer and install the CD or install the software on the CD or whatever and the low profile bracket if you have a um, smaller case for your computer um, has some specifications here um, you probably should meet the uh, system requirements um, shouldn't really be too big of a deal one gig of RAM or above, oh no um, Direct, Direct X 9 or above 200 megabytes hard drive space. If you have less than that, you're probably in trouble. Um, here, what do we have? HD, um, you can put videotapes to DVDs if you plug in your uh, VCR to this. Um, Real-time uh, video games or whatever, that's a lie. It's not real-time. Um, you're going to have to split the signal, but it's not really a problem. You'll see later on. I'll show you how to do it. The Aver TV HD DVR allows users to plug and play any game console on their PC in real time and record it in high definition. When recording HD gameplay, depending on system configuration, video will have slight lag time and delayed display. Yes, it will. Um, but there is a way around this, so um, I will show you that. Um, gonna open it up. It's got a box within a box which is very exciting, I suppose. Um, this opens up, and boom, we've got stuff in it. Um, the 10-in-1 dongle cable. This pretty much plugs into the card and allows you to plug in any of those cable things. Um, what do we have here? Um, yeah. You can do um, component cables, composite cables, you know, just some pretty standard stuff. You could just plug in an audio source, I suppose. Um, you got the installation CD. You can download the newer drivers from their website, which I will show you how to do. Um, you don't really need this, but you can install the software on here, I suppose, if you want to. Um, I don't think I... I think I lost the quick installation guide, but it doesn't really matter. Um, warranty registration, nah. Um, here's the low profile bracket if you have a smaller computer that you want to install this on. And no, you may not install this on a laptop. It will not work on a laptop um, unless you have like an external PCIe X1 adapter um, that plugs in via USB or something. You're not going to be able to install this on your laptop. You will need a desktop PC. And uh, I don't think it has support for Mac. So you'd probably need Windows or a virtual machine with Windows or something. And this is the card itself. Um, I think it came wrapped in something, but whatever, I just put it back in to show you. Um, you got two HDMIs there. Actually, only one of them is an HDMI. The other is for the dongle. And anything you plug in through the dongle, you can only record in 480p. So, you know, standard definition. If you want to record 720p or 1080i, um, you have to use an HDMI cable. Which is good, because you should be using an HDMI cable anyways, um, because it'll make your games look a lot better. Um, so now we're going to move on to the uh, installation.
All right, so um, I've unplugged my computer. You want to unplug everything from your computer, and uh, you're going to be opening it up. I'm going to lay it down here um, like this. And you see here I'm going to have two screws, one there and one there that I'm going to remove to open it up. And then I'm going to remove this screw here so that I can install the cart. And uh, I'm not going to do that on the camera. All right, so now I have removed the three screws. See, they're right there. And uh, I'm just going to pull this out, slide it off. Um, one thing you should do um, before installing any um, components into your computer uh, is press the power button a couple times. This will um, sometimes cause your fan to spin um, because there's sometimes power left over in the circuits. You just want to clear that out so you don't cause any problems. If you're really afraid of anything here, um, static electricity or any of that garbage, um, if you put your wrist on the case, um, that's going to disperse any of the static electricity among the case because I'm assuming you have a metal case um, and that will prevent any static shock and damage to your hardware so um, yeah okay so we got the card here um, and we're gonna put it in so first off you need to make sure you have a spot to put this um, before you buy this card you should probably look at your motherboard and see if you have a spot it's a PCIe X1 uh, underscore 2 and I'm not sure what other PCI ports are compatible if any I think there are other ones that are compatible um, if your computer happens to have a PCIe X1 sorry for the shaky uh, camera here but if your computer happens to have a PCIe X1 then you're uh, you're all good here um, so that's the spot that the cards going to go spin this back around here um, I'm going to lift this up here and take it off with one hand, of course. And um, I've already pulled this out here. Um, it's just an aluminum piece that pops out. This is going to obviously differ depending on the case you have. But um, if you have something similar to this, then you just press here and this pops out. Um, won't go back in, but you probably won't need it too. All right, so now it's time to uh, put the card in the computer. Um, you see right here, this is the part that's going to slide into the PCI um, Express port. So hopefully you can see this. I'm not trying not to block the light um, too badly. But I do need to see to put this in. So um, it's just going to slide right in there just like that. And uh, I'm going to show you again from a different angle. Okay, now hopefully I'll be able to hold this properly so that you can see. We got our PCI port there. Um, trying to make sure the camera's pointed in the right spot and I'm putting this in properly at the same time. Kind of difficult. Focus. Focus. Silly camera. And it just slides in there, and it's in. Um, this shouldn't be too complicated for you to do. Um, I'm surprised mine hasn't overheated because it's like right there off the the heatsink fan from my uh, video card. But um, so it's installed there, and now you see we got these two HDMI ports on the back of my computer that I can plug um, plug it into. Let's see here, I'm going to turn this on the side and try and focus this so that you can see. One says HDMI. It's actually upside down for me and the other one says I don't know, AV-R or something. Um, the HDMI one's the one that you plug in the HDMI and the this one here is for the dongle cable, this one's for the HDMI. And uh, yeah, so now I'll show you how to connect it to your TV or computer or whatever. Okay, now earlier I mentioned that um, 
you're going to have some response lag when you try playing games and using this to record. Um, so there is a fairly simple way to fix this. It's going to, re going to require um, a couple of things though. First off, you're going to need one of these. This is an HDMI splitter cable. Um, this end goes into your Xbox, and then two HDMI cables plug into here. And you're going to need two HDMI cables. Now, I don't recommend that you buy the monster cables from like Future Shop or Best Buy or Circuit City or whatever um, for fifty or sixty dollars. You can buy these on eBay for five or ten dollars. I got mine from a local computer store for ten bucks, and they work fine. They haven't broken or anything caused me any problems. Um, this HDMI splitter, a little harder to find, um, but you can grab them on eBay. Um, this one cost me, uh, I believe, five dollars with shipping from China. Um, it took like two or three weeks to get here, though. Um, if you want it faster, you can order them from the states for about ten dollars with shipping. Um, so that's it's a fairly simple fix, you know. Um, five dollars for each HDMI cable, five dollars for this. That's an extra fifteen dollars on top of the maybe seventy you've spent. Um, and you probably should already be playing with an HDMI cable because if you're not, you're missing out. Um, so first, I have everything on top of my desk here, so that I can uh, show you how this how this works here. So first off, you're going to take this HDMI cable and you want to plug it into the HDMI slot on your Xbox. So there we have it, it's plugged in. And now, I'm standing in the light, I'm sorry. This is hard to do with one hand. Put it down here. Um, we're going to plug in you can plug in both of these HDMI cables. Um, it might cause a problem initially, but I'll show you how to fix that later. Um, so you're going to plug both of these two separate HDMI cables. Here I'll show you. They have, you know, they each have an end. It's two separate HDMI cables. Now, um, going to take one of these cables, it doesn't matter which, and you're going to want to plug it into your TV. Um, I actually use my computer monitor to play games. It's a uh, 1080p Samsung here, and uh, it looks pretty good and whatnot. Um, so, I'll spin it around here on the back of my Samsung. I don't know if you can see it right there. I have an HDMI port which I will be plugging one of these HDMI cables into. So one of those HDMIs, this one, um, goes to the um, monitor or TV. And the other HDMI cable, hold on here, um, this HDMI cable you are going to plug into the capture card. Um, so right here goes into the second where, where are we focused in here or zoomed in here uh, the second HDMI cable goes into the capture card in your computer so we got one here into the computer and one here into your TV or computer monitor or whatever so to do this um, obviously you're going to need a computer monitor that has multiple inputs. One of them has to be an HDMI. The other one obviously has to be able to connect to your computer. Um, I then have a DVI cable here plugged into my monitor. And the other one, the other end of it, sorry, um, I plug into my video card on my computer. Um, you don't have to have a video card to do this. Um, I could just plug it into the VGA that comes standard on my motherboard, but um, this works. So you can do this then with a, uh, a computer monitor with multiple inputs. If you have two computer monitors, one with an HDMI, or if you have a TV with um, an HDMI and a VGA, you could do that too, I suppose. Or if you have a computer monitor 
and a um, television in the same room, then uh, one one of these HDMI cables will go to your will go to your um, TV. The other one will go to your computer. Um, the HDMI splitter is not powered, so um, I recommend using shorter cables. Otherwise, you're going to end up with signal loss. I have six foot cables here, and I have had no problems at all with them. They work just fine. The quality is great, and uh, yeah. So um, now I'm going to plug my computer back in and show you guys the software aspect of it. All right. So here I am on Aver Media's website, looking at the Aver TV HD DVR um, part number C zero two seven. I will be posting this link in the description. Um, you want to click on AP and driver and um, click on this first download link. You click this little floppy disk here. It'll open up a window. You click save file and it will download it to your computer. Alright, so once you've downloaded that, you want to run the file. Um, you're going to click next, accept the terms. You have no choice. Click complete installation and uh, let it install. Ignore this, this shouldn't happen to you. And then click finish. Okay, once you've installed it, you should have a desktop shortcut. I'm just going to quickly go and pin this to the taskbar because I like having that there. Um, yeah. So we're going to run Aver Media Center here. And okay, um, do you want to activate the setup wizard now? Um, no, not really. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what to do. You're going to go here to settings, TV, configure HD input source, configure recording. Um, you can do AVI, but for some reason, um, the encoder it recognizes, the only one it recognizes is the XVID, and Sony Vegas hates XVID and DivX. Um, I have like 20 other codecs, but it doesn't recognize any of them. Um, so I just use the MPEG-2. Um, Frame size you want to change to 1280 by 720. Uh, this is better because your Xbox is going to be set to 720p anyways. Video quality I would set it to 30,000. That will give you the highest quality. It does go up to 40,000, but for some reason that actually makes it a lower bitrate. Um, you get the highest bitrate if you set this to 30,000. Um, audio sample quality you can leave. Audio quality I usually just change to 192 because that's already a fairly high bitrate for audio. Um, you're going to get some pretty high quality audio with that. And then click save, save, and this button here goes home. Um, if you click the TV, uh, your default source is S-Video. Um, you want to change that to HDMI. And I'm turning my Xbox on here. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Okay, so there's a couple things you want to do on your Xbox before you um, start using this. Um, first off, you want to go to System Settings. Um, I believe it's Console Settings Display HDTV Settings, and you want to change it to 720p. Um, I find if you have it on 1080p, uh, the Aver Media Center will only record in 30 frames per second and your gameplay will look blurry which is no good. Um, you should probably do a similar thing with your PlayStation, I'm not sure how that will work. Also, one more thing, um, this capture card does not support HDCP or the high definition copyright or whatever, um, so you cannot use Aver Media Center to record your gameplay. Um, you can view PlayStation 3 gameplay on here, but um, since the PlayStation 3 is copyright protected, you can't record it with this. You're going to have to use a screen capture program or a third party program like Fraps or VH Capture, um, which will still work for you. Um, if you have an Xbox, then you can use Aver Media Center to record. Um, so, yeah, make sure your Xbox is on 720p. And um, display discovery is another thing. Uh, you want to disable this. Um, this will screw up the. Um, HDMI splitter because technically you're like plugged into two displays at the same time and it really confuses it and you'll get like green lines everywhere and it won't look good. 
Um, so that's what you want to do to your Xbox. Alright, so if you want to record with Aver Media Center, um, all you have to do is press Control R. Um, and then you'll get a flashing red dot on the screen and it will indicate that it's recording. I don't think you can see the red dot because I'm recording with fraps. Anyways, um, I'm going to take about 30 seconds of footage here um, recorded with Aver Media Center and um, upload it directly to YouTube without editing it, um, rendering it, converting it. Um, so you can see like the raw footage here. Um, so this will be the footage that will be uploaded. I'll probably put a link to, the, to this in the description and uh, yeah, you'll see what that looks like. Um, to stop recording, you press Control S. Okay, so here we have Aver Media Center on my computer. My Xbox is plugged in there. Um, the Xbox is on, and the HDMI splitter is connected. And now you have one input here is going into the computer for the capture card. And then if I switch inputs here to my HDMI, where is it? Oh, there we go. Now we have a um, somewhat direct source to the Xbox, and this plays um, like the like the splitter wasn't even there. You don't notice it. There's no difference in the quality or anything, um, and you can you know play games in HD unaffected by the lag caused by the capture card, and the capture card will be able to record some pretty high quality video. Um, I'm going to switch back to my computer here. I'm going to be uploading a raw footage, like a 15 second footage um, from the Aver Media Center without me rendering or converting or anything so you can see what the quality, like what the best potential YouTube quality is I suppose um, for this capture card. Um, so yeah. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that you're going to get audio lag um, when you render a video in Sony Vegas. Um, so to get rid of this, to fix this, you're going to need to convert the video first. Um, what I used to do this is any video converter. This is a free program. A link will be in the description. Um, and you're going to need an MJPEG codec. A uh, link to that will also be in the description. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to add a video um, see, I got a random gameplay video here. Um, see, we got 60 frames per second, um, 1280 by 720, and it's a six minute game. Um, so, yeah. Um, up here, you want to go to Customize AVI. Um, your video codec, you want an MJPEG frame size, original or obviously 1280 by 720. I just leave it at original. Video bitrate, this really does not affect anything at all. Um, I find that this bitrate is not the bitrate of the um, converted video. The codec does not really let you change the bitrate. So uh, I just put it at 10,000. I'm pretty sure it does not make a difference no matter what you put it at. Um, video frame rate, you want to leave it at 60. Audio codec, I use PCM. Um, the same bitrate as I record in, same sample rate as I record in. Obviously you want two channel, um, I don't know, maybe you want more, I don't think that there's an option for more. Disable audio, obviously no, and this is important, the AV sync has to be on default. If it's on basic, this won't work, make sure it's on default. And then you click convert, it will take maybe 5 or 10 minutes to convert the video. And then you can put this in Sony Vegas, Sony Vegas will have no problems, the quality shouldn't be any different at all and um, you'll be able to render it without any audio lag or pr otherwise any problems. Alright, so that's the end of my extremely long video on my Aver TV HD DVR. Um, I hope this helped you make a decision if you're looking to buy a fairly cheap um, high definition capture card. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions about um, buying this, if you're considering purchasing one of these or if you already have one and you're having trouble setting it up or working it at all um, please feel free to leave